You're watching old mates, Backyard Tech. Yesterday, for Tuesdays at the Backyard Tech channel, we did a profile video, the first in a long time. And we had a look at one of the Super Micro 113-6s that I had chosen to run Nest server. Well, while I was out yesterday, Arvo, I couldn't wait. So I went and set it all up as my new Neth server server. Good day everyone, thank you for tuning in. You are watching Midweek Wednesdays here at the Backyard Tech Channel and uh, yeah, old mate couldn't wait. <laughs> the video you're about to see I made yesterday, but it didn't all go swimmingly and the result was less than brilliant. For those that joined us for last night's convo, you would have heard that my little HP SFF that's been running PFSense the power supply did the hand grenade thing, so I had to quickly cobble together another PF Sense box, which I will show you at a later date what I've done. But for this video, uh, we're going to wind the clock back to yesterday and uh, have a look at me setting up and not going so well until very late in the piece, the single quad-core quad-thread Xeon Supermicro 113-6 server that's now running my network here at home. And if you like stuff ups, you'll like this video. Arvo all, it's just gone 10 to 3 Tuesday afternoon and uh, old mate can't wait. <laughs> We're going to do the net server swap out now. Um, I'm going to show you what I've done. As you can see, we now have 4 gig of RAM in it, a quad core, quad thread, Xeon CPU at 2 gig, more than enough to run Nest server on. We're going to raid this up. Um, you're all going to have an S fit with me, but this is my stuff. I'm going to do it the way I want it done, not the way you guys want me to do it. All right, so I'm going to do it my way. So um, I've got four hard drives in here now. One, two, sorry, one, two, three, four. All right, this is how it goes. Um, so I'm going to rate them up. They're all three gigabit, which is fine. I'm not worried. Um, this is a SATA only server. This will not take SAS, unfortunately. So SATA only, which is look, well, that's perfectly fine. I'm not really worried. Let's um, let's get this rated up, and then uh, we'll pull everything out of the cabinet and get it in the cabinet. So at least I've got this up tonight. Um, I'm going to pull down ESXi as well. And uh, that's going to disappear too. Um, by the looks of it, the RAM and the Acer will run in the Dell. So I am very happy about that. These are all Western digital hard drives in the new NET server. So, which is fine. It's a host RAID 5081. I'm hoping Neth server will see the RAID. Um, I really don't want to have to create a soft array if I don't have to. All right, so I'm going to create the array. Now, the second drive, which is this drive, is just my next cloud stuff, right? Which is why I'm making it a 600 gig drive. The reason being is this is not going to store anything critical. So basically, it's designed for when I go away, I can remote access next cloud, 
get whatever I've got on here and job done. So this won't store anything that's serious. So I have no problem with going to RAID 0 for it. All right. So there is it done. I have Neth server here. Oh, there's a disk in there. Hang on. All right, got the disk out. Got Neth server there. Exit utility. Yes. And I'll go ahead and uh, install. Well, get this ready to install. Assuming Neth server can actually see the RAID controller. That's absolutely critical. If Neth server can't see the RAID controller, then I'm going to have to do, well, I may have to do a soft RAID. I don't want to, but I might have to. Ready to go, quickly initialized. Two logical drives. Here it comes, there we go. All right, so what I wanna do is just see where the NETH server can see the RAID if it can see the raid, all good. If it can't, I'm gonna to have to come up with another idea. But I've decided I'm gonna do this server today, and then we might look at the big R730 tomorrow. Apologies for the rising lines, it's the plasma screen. So two gig quad core, four gig of RAM, optical drive and four hard drives. It's more than what I probably need, but hey, I don't care. I'm just curious to see whether Neth server can see the RAID controller, because if it can, I will be very happy. Because the IPMI is gonna have an S fit, I know that. That's it. This isn't freaking ILO. It's IPMI. <laughs> it's not ILO. It's IPMI. Uh, old mate's an idiot. He should know the difference between high, ILO and IPMI. Yes, you're right. I should. I always get confused between HP's ILO, IPMI, which is super micro. Now, I'm leaving my existing IP set up as it is. I'm not changing that because otherwise I've got to change the configuration of every damn computer here. I just want to check to make sure I'm going to be able to use the RAID that I've got. Theoretically, Neth server should support it. It's normally reasonably good at adapt deck RAID controllers. I say normally, it's not necessarily the case. I haven't got a mouse. Hang on. All right. I've got a mouse. Uh, I want to do installation. Yeah, I can't see it. Damn it. Hang on. All righty. Well, I have changed from the Adapt Deck RAID controller to the onboard Intel RAID controller. This thing has two RAID controllers. It's got an Adapt Deck and an Intel. So I'm going to see whether or not Neth server will pick up the Intel version. And if it does, all good. If it doesn't, unfortunately, I'll have to do a software raid. All right. Well, I'm going to have to create a software array for this. Um, it errors in Intel. 
I'll just create two software arrays. Um, but what I'll do is get it into the cabinet. We'll get everything out of the cabinet, get it into the cabinet and get started on it uh, shortly. So we'll see you once I've got everything in and out of the cabinet. Alrighty, so ESXi's out, the old server's out. Here's the new server. It'll go in here. Need to fix up a little bit of cabling. <laughs> it's a bit messy, but I'll get it installed and then we'll get uh, Neth server set up. All right, we have power, we have network. As you can tell, I will now power it up and then we'll get it rated up. Um, software RAID 1 um, and then software probably RAID 0 maybe, I don't know. All right, let's get this powered up and uh, we'll get it all set up. All right, so deselect these two disks. I'm just going to use those two and put it into RAID 1. Which I should be able to actually do. Hang on. Alright, well I've got to do it on each drive. So that, or each partition. So that they're all in RAID 1. Um, RAID 1 RAID 1 and if it'll take it RAID 1 so everything's in RAID 1 alright um, we go back to home you can see there it's all RAID 1 So you can see there, it's all software RAID 1, which will do. Apply the changes. All right, so network and host name. I'm going to turn number one on and find out what it gets an address from, because I may have these back to front. I do have them back to front. Hang on. Let's try that again. That's better. Because number two or Ethernet, that's Ethernet zero. Right? And that's Ether one. So I can set Ether two up later. Alright? So we've all seen installing Net Server before. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, I'm going to go off and install this now and then I will be back. Alright, the installation has started and as you can see it's reading both drives. Alright, so obviously RAID 1, I'm losing a little bit of performance but that's fine. I'm not too, I'm not too worried about that. So, once, uh, once I've got it all installed and uh, configured to the LAN side of things, uh, we'll go back to the main PC and um, get the final bit done. Now that didn't actually take that long, which is nice. So I'll do the final little bit of config. Then I'll uh, head back to the desk and uh, do the rest of it. <laughs> 